Hi y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Um, how are y'all today? So, I am going to continue doing this because it, to be honest, makes me feel better as a person. Um, to do my Bible study on video and then I can go back and watch it and see if there's anything, you know, that I needed to reevaluate about myself or about what I said. So, Trial and error, trial and error. Um, today I watched Joyce, and I wanted to just kind of go over what she went over today. Um, and let me just start this with a prayer. And Lord, we just want to thank you and give you all the praise and glory. And we just want to ask you for wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of what we're reading today and what we're talking about. And just uh, allow us to... Pray and meditate on what you need us to, and at moments when it is definitely our choice, allow us to recognize those moments and to allow our spirit to guide us to where you need us, like you did with Paul. And we just say these things in your holy son's name, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, today's in Josh, Joshua, um, and... By faith in God, I will not fear. I'm not afraid. You can feel fear. However, fear... I'm sorry. You can feel fear. However, not backing down from negative fear. Meaning that there's healthy fears and there's unhealthy fears. Healthy fears are kind of... Fear and reverence of the Lord, um, not necessarily fearing Him, like being afraid, but wanting to be obedient. Um, even when we need a spanking, um, and sometimes we do, um, He does not give us that. He gives us grace, and He pours it out abundantly, and it tells us that in the Bible a lot, that you know, grace is something we don't deserve, yet we still get because that's how good God is. And that's how much he loves us and wants for us. Face it even if you do it afraid is what Joy said. Now, Joshua chapter 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord, it came to pass, the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' ministering, minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over to the Jordan. Thou and all of and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Now, if you remember, Moses, when the Ten Commandments were being written, the Israelites were idolizing a golden calf they made in the image of the Lord. Um, and at that time, the Lord had just handed him the Ten Commandments on the two tablets, and he had, and he said, that's it, I'm done with them, I'm done. They're already down there, just, you know, he left for a second, and they're already down there doing something you know, doing what I said, don't do, idolizing other gods, you know, putting an image or a basis on me of what I'm supposed to be. And so then Moses throws down the towel and says, Lord, please let me go down there. You know, let me talk to them. I can stop them. And the Lord says, that's fine. But he tells Moses that his feet will never touch the promised land that he promised to the Israelites. Okay. So with that, 
here in Joshua, in the first chapter, it starts off that Moses, God's servant, is dead. And God says that to Joshua, well, you're going to take Moses' place. Now, God doesn't tell him to go and be like Moses or be Moses. He tells him he's going to take Moses' place. So, Joshua's kind of like, I'm going to take Jesus or Moses' place. Me? You mean the Moses? Mo the Moses? I'm going to take his place? God doesn't want you to be somebody else. Just like he doesn't want me to be like Joyce Meyer or Stephen Furtrick or anyone else off the Hillsong channel. However, he will use those people as inspiration for me to get to where I'm going. He uses us all as an instrument and as a part of Christ's body. And together we all make one body in Christ. So, you know, it tells us, he tells uh, tells Joshua to get up. Okay, I, okay, the serv my servant's passed, and, you know, don't be lazy. Get up, confront your fear. No one can do it for you. God has already declared over your life what you're going to do, what you're going to be, and everything. You agreed to come to earth and take those steps to be in him, for him, his ride or die, as you would say it now, um, 100%. Um, and in Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, God tells us, God's gifts are irrevocable, but God tells us that his plans, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity, and gather you from all the nations, from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. So, he's saying he knows plans for us. He knows the plans he had in store for us. Plans of good, not of bad. So if you're scared about taking that that leap of faith, don't be scared. It is scary because it, it means changing your whole life. It means changing your lifestyle, changing things that you do, things that you don't do, things you're going to do. It changes. It changes you. It changes things. But these are good changes. You can have the fear. It's not saying that fear is just going to go away and you're not going to have fear anymore. It's saying that confront the fear. Okay, Satan wants you to be sad, feeling as if you're nothing, feeling empty, telling you that you're the one that grace can't save. You're the one that God ain't going to use. Uh, oh, you're covered in all them tattoos, and oh, look at your piercings, and oh, you know, all your colorful hair, and sometimes the way you talk and you act. Desiree, there's no way that, that God's going to use you, because, well, why would he? Why would he use a person like you? He tells me all the time, nobody loves me, nobody wants me, nobody needs me, I, I, you know. But God has a purpose for each and every one of us, a bigger plan, bigger than anything we thought of. So, even if I reach nobody today, yesterday, and tomorrow with these video clips, I know that they're doing something in my life, and that's what it means. you got to get up and you got to make decisions, even if God doesn't necessarily give you the answer. And that's what this whole study is about. Even when God's not giving you the answer specifically right then, in his actual word, what he wants for you to do, he still has a plan for you. He wants you to be a part of making the plans for your life. How boring would it be if we weren't? Right? So, but God has already decided you have to take the next step. Okay? He's already said, here, go. Go into the Jordan, you know, um, and take Moses' place. You're not going to be Moses. You're not going to do it just like Moses. Okay? So expect 
to make mistakes. Expect to make different mistakes. But he's saying to us that he knows the plans he has for us. He knows what's going to happen. And faith is the substance of something not seen or actually known, but believed to be. So, then we go to Joshua 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Now, he told Moses, every, you know, everywhere you step, all this land, it's going to be yours, all the nations, you know. And Moses gave that up for the 40,000 Israelites to save them. He gave up the opportunity to, for his feet to actually touch, you know, the land. And Moses said, you know, that's, I'll take that. I'll take that if that means that the Israelites will have a chance. So that's, you know, Moses gave something up too. Every person in the Bible gave something up, whether it was good or bad. Every one of them took a leap of faith and sure, they were scared. Everyone's had that conversation. You know, Jeremiah has it. Uh, Moses had it. Daniel, every one of them. So, every place the soles of your feet touch is yours. God don't have favorites. He doesn't have a specific person for, you know, this specific thing. Or, you know, he's he ain't got no favorites. There's no special person out there who's particularly, you know, like, God's favorite. Like, his favorite king was David in the Old Testament, okay, um, but he doesn't have favorites, he doesn't judge us by our works and stuff like that, um, so, he, he doesn't, he doesn't look at one person and say, that's my favorite servant, you know, that's my best servant out of, you know, the beings and beings of people, he doesn't, he doesn't do that. Just like he doesn't put somebody in your path for not no reason at all as a test, you know, or there's something, you know, that you're going to learn about yourself through that person. And, and it helps you in the long run. You may meet that person and think that you're going to be the bestest friend. You're going to see each other for the rest of your lives. It's just going to be fabulous. It's going to be wonderful. You're going to grow old together as friends. But then you can find out that no. That person's not a stepping stone for you, okay? So don't take it as me saying it's a stepping stone. But that person was only meant to teach you something in your life. So that person is not meant to be a crutch. And faith, the Holy Bible, the Lord's Word, is not a crutch. You're not on a crutch leaning for something, okay? So, God loves, but He... he is especially excited about bold people that can't be denied. People who go out and say, this is my faith. This is what I believe. This is what I think. And you know what? No matter what happens, no matter if it touches somebody, no matter if I'm as big as Joyce Meyer and on Hillsong Channel, or I stay right here in this little two-bedroom house preaching the word of Jesus Christ, touching very little people compared to what Joyce or, you know, other stations and channels may do and, and such. But that's where he wants me. So I want to be where God wants me to be, not where I want to be, not where I'm familiar with. Because what I'm familiar with and where, you know, he wants me to be is two different things, too. So... You have to stand up. You have to proclaim. Be bold and say, I'm not going to be held back by my past. I'm not going to be held back by what I think that I can or can't do. I'm not going to be held back because today's rainy and it's, uh, I'm not going to be stopped just because, you know, my hip is hurting really bad today. I'm going to take two a leave, stand up, get them dishes done, pull something out for dinner, and then I'm going to go from there. Sometimes we just have to make the decision without necessarily waiting for the answer from God. Because if Paul would have waited 
some of those times for the answer from God. He'd have never been where he needed to be, like he needed to be. So, expect to make mistakes. Expect to stumble, but don't expect to fall, because he doesn't let us fall. That's Satan trying to declare over our mind what we know in our heart. And what flows from your heart is what defiles the body, not what goes in. Okay? So remember that if you're spewing out ugliness from your heart and you're chasing money and drugs with your heart, then that's where you're going to be. That's where you're going to be. And God's going to put you in the most uncomfortable place to bring you, like he did with the Israelites, into the wilderness and then back. And then what he tell us in Jeremiah 29, 11, he told us, and then I will gather you from the nations which I spread you and departed you to, and I will bring you back to the land that I promised to give you. Right? So, in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, he says that he knows what's going on. He knows what he's going to be doing for us. He is on it. And that if we just trust in him, Still make decisions, be bold, speak proudly about God and what he's done for you. But find your purpose in life. Find where you are in the body of Christ and find where it is he needs you to be. Because there's a function you serve, whether it be for to see, to speak, to hear, to love unconditionally. Love above everything else is greater than. And, and the Bible tells us that in Corinthians um, chapter 13, the chapter of love. So, you just have to proclaim. You're not going to be held back. You're not going to be held down. You're not going to allow this to stop you from being bold and courageous and, and speaking out for what you believe in and what you think. It doesn't matter if someone thinks that you're a joke or thinks that... Oh, look, she's pretending, or he's pretending, or he's fake, or... You know what? It's what you know in your heart. If you're doing it for the right reasons, then it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. The only thing that should matter is, does God think that what I'm doing is right? Do I believe in my heart that God gave me this moment to express to others and to spread the gospel? He gave me this gift to give to others. I love to talk, therefore, makes sense. God loves the fact that I love to talk. Not everybody else does necessarily, but God gave me a gift. That's a gift. It's a part of who I am. It's a part of my gift is to be able to talk like I do and to be able to talk so much. I mean, because, well, if you don't like to talk, then you're not going to be a teacher or an evangelist, are you? An evangelist. Exactly. So you would have a different purpose in the body of Christ, whether you're the strong arm, yeah, or the beating heart. But somewhere in the functioning, you are one with Christ. You have a purpose. Don't deny that purpose. Proclaim it in the name of Jesus Christ and then set out to do it. Make your decisions. And... You know, to be a Christian today, a real Christian, okay, a, a real child of God, let's say it that way, a real Christian, takes lots of guts. It's not just about, oh, let me go pray, read, and watch Joyce on TV, and then I'm going to be powered up. You need more. You need to read the Word of God. Put it in there. Meditate on it. Ask God questions. Ask others questions. Talk about it. Um, and, and just know that in in all of it, you know, there's gifts. In order to get them gifts, you got, you, you know, in order to be blessed, you have to be a blessing. You know, so he's going to bless us so that we can be a blessing. Um, turn my little camera a little bit here. Cause, see, I write it all down. I do this all morning, just for this specific purpose, um, so, but inspire others with the gifts he gave you, in other words, 
God gave me a, a voice to talk and, you know, as they would call it, a silver tongue. You know, I, I can be smooth and say things and, and make someone believe. Uh, you know, what I'm saying is true. Oh, no, no, girl, the sky is red right now. Orange, purple, gray. Girl, I'm talking about it looks like Rainbow Central. Have you going outside thinking it's really happening, believing it? And and that's that's the gift he gave me, though. He gave me a gift to go out and tell people about him and to believe these stories, to hear them and know that they're real. These These things really happen. David really killed Goliath with a rock and a slingshot. One rock, not three. A little bitty rock. Maybe the size of a dime. A giant. And I believe he did. I believe Jonah was swallowed by a whale. I believe what I've read. And, and not just based on that, but on my experience with God. So, you know, you're called for a purpose. You're called to do something. And your mind is to be Christ-like. You're to stay out of the works of the flesh. You're to meditate on the Word. Put it in your heart. Write it on the tablet of your heart. Because Satan can mess with your thoughts. He can toy with your thoughts. He can even toy with the word. He's read this book. He knows it front to back. He knows it better than most of us. Um, and, and he'll take and he'll twist those words. He'll twist those words real quick. Um, and that's, some people just don't even realize that what they're reading, you know, Satan is trying to twist it. He's trying to turn it into his favor, but just remember God prevails. Love and God prevails. But you got to be bold and live that life. Like, actually live that life. Don't just say you're about it. Just don't be, um, what's he say? It says in the Bible, don't be a, a hearer of the word only. Be a doer also. So don't just be out there, oh, look, I go to church and I pray for all these people on Facebook. And, and I go out and I give food and I help others. That's not the only thing you're supposed to do. We're supposed to read this book. Put it all in there. Get it good and in there. This is our basic instructions before leaving Earth Bible. Okay? That's that's what this is. And you need to know these things. So, Joshua 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Okay, so he didn't tell him to go be like Moses. He said, as I was with Moses, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. So I don't want you to go be like Moses. I don't want you to take the staff and throw it down and, you know, part the Red Sea and carry the covenant. I don't want you to do what Moses did. Okay, you're Joshua, and I need you to be in Moses' place so that I can be with you the way I need to be. And that means he wants us to be an example. Okay, Moses was Joshua's mentor, or as it would say, example. Okay, if you want to think of it as that, a disciple is an example. Of what you're supposed to try to be like. And the Bible tells us that he's called us to be evangelists, disciples, teachers, and, and to spread the word of Jesus Christ in every fashion and way that he can think of. I'm so sorry, y'all. Um, don't want to be anyone but who God called you to be. Okay? Just want to be who you're meant to be. I'm Desiree Louise Ross. And I love Christ, and I love teaching people about Christ, and I love talking about the Bible, and, and having that type of understanding doesn't make me feel above anybody else. It just makes me feel like he's given me something to look forward to in life. He's given me something 
that tells me every person in my past who said I wouldn't be anything, who said I'd always be a, a drug using, blah, 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 was wrong. And God's proven doctors wrong in my life. He's proven people wrong in my life. And he's always revealing and removing the stuff that he that you don't need in your life. He's constantly and then you have to ask for that. You have to pray for it. Pray for wisdom, understanding, knowledge and and for better examples in your life. And and you'll get those things. And he'll give them unto you without judgment, without saying, Well, you gotta do this to get that. No. He'll use you right where you're at, right now, wherever you are, he can use you. He'll use you and it will be when you least expect it. He'll use you, and when he does, and you see it, and you feel it, and you know it, and you live it, no one can take that away from you. Not any person. So, you know, be an example. Don't try to be someone else. Don't try to be like Miley Cyrus, or, you know, Joyce Meyer, or... I mean, there's there's so many people. I, I keep going back to Joyce Meyer and Stephen Furtrick. And, you, you know, you're not going to be like the preacher's wife. And you're not going to be the preacher necessarily to where you're saying, Oh, well, tell me more. And you just listen and you have all these wonderful thoughts. But there's something specific that God has for you that he wants to do for you in your life. To use you just as he's used every person that he has in the Bible. Just like he's used every person that he has in my life to guide me to where I am now. So, I mean, regardless to what anybody thinks, just I know dead center of this video, I'm going to say I love you. Even if you watch this and you feel like it's fake and that I'm pretending or you know the real me, then all I have to do and all I have to say is that I do love you. I don't care who you are watching this. I don't care what negative I might have said in the past or done toward you. If I've harmed you, I'm sorry. If I've said something or did something to you in your life or told you you would be nothing or anything like that, I'm so sorry. And that was Satan working through me. But I'm telling you right here and right now that God is working through me now. And he is teaching me and telling me so much more than he ever has before and he's going to continue to use me whether it only helps me or it helps everyone that I encounter and I would really hope that it helps everyone that I encounter I hope that every person who sees it or takes the time to view it says hey you know what that's real that's from the heart it's from the soul you know let's take that Joyce Meyer started out you know wearing shorty shorts and smoking cigarettes in her living room with 25 other you know, women doing Bible study. So, you know, he'll use you right where you're at right now for his greater good. And you just have to remember that. So, now we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Okay, verse 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly... I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So God talks to his people. Straight off the rib, he talks to you. Right there, he's telling you. I already knew what I was going to do for you in your life. I already knew where I wanted you. I knew where I needed you to be. I knew where I placed you. I don't know exactly all the decisions you're going to make. But I know, I already know, you're going to do what you set out to do. And that's why his plans always work out the way they do. We may not feel like they're right. We may be like, you know what? That was wrong call. You're wrong. That's it. That was the wrong call. You should have never took that person out of my life. That was wrong, wrong, wrong. I love that person. But he knows what's best for you. If you're using that person as a crutch, he's going to take them out of your life. He don't want you to have crutches. You're not disabled. Even if you're, as they would say, disabled. 
You're still not disabled in God's eyes. There's a purpose. You have a purpose. You have, even if it's to see how Christian somebody else is, you have a purpose. You do. And God just wants you to know that. You have a purpose. You just, you gotta, you gotta ask Him. You gotta find out from Him. And I believe this is part of my purpose. I really do. Okay? So God talks to His people, and He talks using the word. Before you did it right or wrong, God said, You're my man. You're my woman, you're my person, you're my disciple, you're my evangelist, you're my teacher, you're my disciples, you are, you are it, you. So, you know, before we were formed, he sanctified us and said, you, you're going to do it, you, I choose you. And he don't pick favorites, but he chooses each and every one of us for a purpose to prosper us. And for good, not of evil. So, everyone, even these who don't seem to you, they are of God, okay? And when I say don't seem, I mean, in your personal opinion, you're looking at that person. You're looking at what they're doing. And to you, even their actions seem not of God. That's not for you to judge. It's not your place. It's not your place to say, "Oh, that's not of that's not that's not what God wants you to do." Because what God wants you to do, God may not want the other person to do. God may want me to be an evangelist or a teacher or a disciple, but he may not want Brian to be. He may not want my daughter to be or either one of my sons. He may want them for a completely different purpose, and I may disagree with it entirely. It still doesn't change what God intends for us. It still doesn't change what his plans are for us. And that's also what Jeremiah 29, 11 is teaching us. So those are his plans. And it doesn't matter. Let no weapon formed against you prosper and no tongue rose against you in judgment. You got to remember these things. That's why we read the word. That's his promise. That's his promise. And Isaiah... Let's see, where is it? Uh, well... Uh, I did have it marked in my Bible. Uh, I'm going to have to go back through. It's, Jer it's Isaiah 40. Oh, my bad. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So, what your Holy Spirit's telling you is not right for you. Like dyeing your hair 50 shades of every color of the rainbow and multiple tattoos, over 36 of them to be exact, may not be necessarily the same for me. He may need me to be tatted up and pierced in different hair colors so that when a person who's got 50 different shades of hair color in their hair and looks tatted up and different understands that even God can use them. Even God can use them. He made good and bad. He made it all. He tells us that in Deuteronomy. So, you, you just have to remember what's important. And, and God's word is what is more important. He gave it to us to share with us so that we could proclaim it to others. So... Everyone, even those who don't seem they're of God, they don't seem to be the same material as you, that's judging a book by its cover. This is my cover, but what's in here is what I'm speaking, and that matters. Um, they all have a purpose. He made good and bad. He is the creator of all, right? So he knew what he wanted. 
He wanted you before you were even in the womb. For a chosen instrument of God's. So, we're a chosen instrument. If you choose... If God chose you for something, um, you're wasting your time trying to do anything else other than that and thinking you'll be happy doing it. So if you try to be and do everything else that everybody else is out here doing, like, oh, I'm going to be a cosmetologist or I'm going to be a mechanic or I'm going to be a um, janitor, okay, um... If that's not what God's instrument for you is, if that's not what he's anointed you to do, then trying anything else is it's just, it's not going to, and it, let me rephrase it. Trying anything else and expecting to be happy is not going to work. Because you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be content in all your situations. So if you find that you're frustrated, then obviously you're you're doing something that's not ordained by God. It's not got its hand of God on it, okay? So we're going to go down to Jeremiah 6 through 8. Then said I, ah, the Lord, God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt... Go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So right there, 6 through 8, he's talking about, that's the conversation we all, we all have had this conversation with God. Moses had it. Abraham and Sarah had it. They all had this talk with God. Well, I, I, I can't be an evangelist. I can't. You know, get up and, and speak to, to God about, speak to people about God. Look at me. I'm covered in tattoos. I got piercings in my face. Uh, I never can decide what color my hair is going to be from month to month. You know, uh, nobody's going to believe me. Nobody's, nobody's going to take me seriously. They're going to think I'm joking. They're going to think that I don't know what I'm talking about. They're going to say I'm a liar. That is all Satan telling you lies. Those are excuses stuffed with lies that Satan fed you. And you're giving Satan a stronghold when you speak those things into existence. So if you expect to do good and to be good and, and you want it, then you got to go out and do it. You just got to make a plan, do an action, get out there and do it. You know? And... Having that conversation doesn't change it. Now, understand, God wants you to have that conversation with him. Don't go to somebody else and complain about God. Go to God and talk to God about what your complaints are. You know, make you a list. Complaint. I'm on a beach, on an island. Nobody knows who I am, where I'm at. Everybody else on the boat died but me. That's my complaint. Thanks. Over here next to it. God separated me from everyone who died in the shipwreck and anointed me for something else. And then taking the steps, okay? Take that and write your complaint down and then write your thankfulness down. It, it helps you to be able to see that. Now, verse 17 um, says, Thou therefore gird up thy loins. And arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Get out all the fear and doubt. Just take it out. Just take it. Don't faint. Don't give up. Don't waver. If you need to make a decision and you haven't heard from him and you've prayed about it and you don't know what's going on, then he wants you to do what's in your heart, what you believe is the next step. Doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. It doesn't mean that you're wrong either. It just means that he needs you to take action. He wants you to be a part of your life. And, and it can be scary making that leap because you're not sure. You're not. You know, looking at a person like me, 
I wasn't sure. I was like, God, are you sure? And I had that same conversation with him. You positive? You want me to get on camera and talk to people about you? Like, they ain't even going to believe me. They're not going to believe nothing I say. They're not going to believe that I've changed. They're not going to believe that this is really me in here. They're going to think that this is Desiree, you know, playing her little games again or going off on a little tangent. And no, I'm staying this way. I'm staying this way. This is it. This is, I, I don't want to live that life anymore. I don't want to be about that life anymore. This is the life for me. This is what I want for me. And that's what he wants. And I'm the happiest I've ever been. So, you know, if, if you're finding yourself frustrated, then it's not of God. Take your hand off of it and move forward. Don't say that somebody being gay or somebody being heterosexual or somebody being this or somebody being that should be any type of way that they can't be saved or be a Christian. Because then you're putting doubt and fear into their life. Don't speak curses. Speak blessings over that person. Because God wants you to be a part of determining your life. He don't want you to make every decision. He doesn't want to have to make every decision for us. Um, we get a choice. And that's because he loves us. It's God's will that we have a great part in determining our path. Decide on your own what is great, what is good, what is right, and follow that. Follow that which you know is right and good. And your spirit, that's what it's there for, is going to help you to determine each one of those things. Mm -mm, that's not of God. That's not of you. That's not what God wants for you. God may want tattoos on that person. God may want all that other stuff on that other person. He may want, you know, that person to be overweight or that person to be super skinny or that person to be blonde. This one to have orange hair and, you know, this one to be pierced and that one to be tatted. He may want each individual person to have a different perspective, but there that's because he knows what's best for us. And he needs to reach every person out there. So if it comes from a least likely expecting party, it's kind of a shocker. It's kind of like, man, if God can work a miracle in that girl, why can't he work one in me? Well, guess what? He can. He can. Right now, right here, he can do that. You have to give him that power, though. It's it's giving him a sacrifice, kind of. You know, um, you're sacrificing control for your purpose. Let God have control of your life, and you'll figure out your purpose. It'll come to you. It will. He'll answer you. And stop waiting for all these fancy angels and trumpets and horns to deliver the news, because sometimes he may not even answer us, and it may be because he wants us to be a the biggest part of helping determine our life, he wants us to do it because we want to do it, not because it, we feel forced or because we're afraid we're going to get a spanking from our father. He wants us to do it because we want to be with him and we love him and we want to. We want to. We want to. Okay? Is it possible to make a mistake? Yeah. It can be highly likely, but that's how we learn. It's how we learn to follow peace, learn to follow wisdom, use common sense. That's how we learn. Know the word of God. Don't try kick in just any door. Gently press on it. See if it opens to you. Don't get into the works of the flesh. You know, um, push on the door. See if it moves. If it moves, take a step in. You'll know if it's for you and of God. If you've honestly prayed on it, your spirit is there. Your comforter, your helper is there because Jesus isn't right beside you like he was with the disciples. This is why he said God will give you a comforter. He will bring you a helper, someone who will be there when I'm not. But in order for you to get this comforter, I can't be here. So I have to be sacrificed. If you get frustrated with what you're trying to do, then back off. Maybe that's God's way of saying his hand is not on this and it's not open to you just yet or at all. Um, to wait. take Just back off and wait. Give me a minute. I, I don't want you to do anything. I just, you know, just live life. 
live life. Okay. And that's, I, I think that's something that we don't realize is that he wants us to just sometimes live life. And as we live life, things fall into place. They start doing things. They start moving mountains. Okay. And if anyone gives you a word, test any word you get to see if it's from God. Test the fruit of the word. Okay. So what someone says, if you get that little voice that says, ah, uh, it's not for you. I really don't need you in that area, that category. That could throw you off track from where I actually need you. If it doesn't agree with your spirit, then say no thank you. It's that simple. You don't have to agree to it. It's that simple. Um, for, for instance, I had a calling, and I thought about it, and I didn't fully understand everything, so I backed out. Now, if I knew what I knew now then, I, I don't per se know what I would have actually done, but I think it would have been different, a different outcome, a different response. But that's not where God wanted me. Um, he didn't want me in primary. He wanted me for a, a bigger purpose. Uh, I like to talk and I like to ask questions, whether they're rhetorical or not. It's a different question. Um, what is for another may not be for you. That's why you confirm it in your spirit, your spirit, not mine, not me, not the way I'm walking in my faith, but the way you're walking in your faith. You confirm it with your spirit. Um, and that's what it means to not lean on your own understanding, but your spirit to confirm it. How boring would it be if we couldn't be involved in our own life